The following program is brought to you by the Internet Broadcasting Organization. Use of any firearm without proper training in safety and firearm usage is extremely dangerous. It is highly recommended that anyone owning or using a firearm attend a certified firearm safety course, and practice proper firearm procedures. The views and opinions expressed on the K-Gun Show are those of the individuals and does not reflect the views and opinions of the K-Gun Show, r and Firearms, or TalkWatt Studios. Straight from TalkWatt Studios in beautiful, sunny Tampa, Florida, this is the K-Gun Show. The Second Amendment needs our voice. We bring you the latest information about all firearms while revisiting some of the true classics in the industry. We are NRA certified instructors, and as always, safety and education is our first priority. The K-Gun Show is brought to you by R&R Firearms. on Wednesday and my name is Catherine K. Guns and this is the K. Gun Show. I've been a firearms instructor for about uh, since 2010 and uh, what started that whole thing was uh, uh, being in the firearms industry for about 15 years and then I got a CWP and that instructor was so good he taught me more in that you know three-hour course than I did in all the years of handling firearms and then it just kind of went on from there and I really enjoy what I do. Sounds good. Thank you, Catherine. And I'm JR. I've been around firearms since I was a little kid. Like most Americans, I started off um, learning from my, um, my father, my grandparents, and they taught me the basics of firearms and how to respect the firearms. And since then, I've been involved with them. Um, currently, I hold several NRA certifications for um, instructors. I am the manager at r and Firearms, and I'm a range officer, and, um, and that's about it, I think. Yeah. I'm well, sure I'll come up with something else later on. Oh, I'm on, sure. But, yeah. <laughs> but right now, that's all I got for you today. <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> so there's a few messages that we need to bring, and that will be that we are trained, we are professionals, so you really shouldn't try these things at home. There are some safety rules that we need to consider, and I'm going to let JR take away with that. Yes. And these are basic NRA um, safety rules that everybody should follow each time and every time they handle a firearm. Number one rule, always keep your firearm pointed in a safe direction. Number two, always keep your finger off the trigger until ready to shoot. And of course, always keep the gun unloaded until ready to use it. Absolutely. There's some also some other rules that you really should consider. And it's know what's beyond your target. Um, just because you can't see past that wall doesn't mean that the uh, bullet won't go beyond that. Know how to use your gun safely. Read the owner's manual. Take a class, um, and uh, there's even YouTube videos out there that'll teach you um, functions checks and how to clean it and things like that. Be sure your sa gun is safe to operate. Only use the correct ammunition for your firearm. Never use alcohol or over-the-counter prescriptions or other drugs before or while during shooting. And then store your guns so that they are not, uh, not accessible to unauthorized people. Who's an unauthorized person? Anybody that you don't want using your firearm. Absolutely. And Kay, you did mention YouTube. Um, it's a per it's um, important to mention about YouTube videos. If you're going to go to YouTube to get instructions about video about your firearms, make sure you go to a YouTube that video that's approved by the firearm manufacturer right. or that's been um, okay through an NRA certified instructor. Um, there's a lot of you who's out there and um, that are doing unsafe actions with firearms yeah. out there, and we don't want you copying any of those. So make sure you watch a YouTube video that's approved by the manufacturer of your firearm or one that's been approved by the NRA. Yeah, or either that or just come and see us. We'll that's help right. you out. So um, today we're going to have Lance Bullen coming all the way out from uh, California. He's going to do it via Skype. We're going to interview him on gun myths. And uh, in just a little bit, we're going to do an introduction on, but we'll be right back with our firearms commercial. <laughs>
R&R Firearms is a retail store located in St. Petersburg, Florida, giving our customers the time and education they need to make buying a firearm a safe and easy transaction. R&R Firearms also provides NRA training courses. Stop by our store in St. Petersburg, Florida at 1411 16th Street North or visit our website at www.rrfirearms.com. That's rrfirearms.com. And we're back. Yay! (laughs) So we're going to introduce Lance Bolin. And uh, Lance is an NRA training counselor based out of Orange County. uh, County. His father is also an NRA instructor. Lance served in the Marine Corps Security Forces Battalion with the Weapons Company and 2nd Battalion and 5th of Marines. Lance has a passion for training in the civilian ward. And just in case you didn't know what a NRA um, counselor does, NRA counselors train the NRA instructors. So counselors like like him and trained us and um, train all your instructors out there. And so um, he's a step above us. So he, he's the expert when it comes to safety. Yeah, absolutely. I'm very, very honored to have him on. Is, there a, uh, is, Lan- is Lance available? I am. There he is. Hi. Hi. How are you this evening? We're doing great. A little, a little bit of audio there. So. You with, with us, Lance? I sure am. Okay, we okay. lost you there for a second. Um, I think we had a blurb in the internet today. Oh, so, it's not just enough. Uh, it's not uh, enough just to have a gun for protection. The best guns for uh, women are small c- calibers. This, this is what we hear a lot when we talk about. Um, I hear this every time I go to a gun store, and they really don't know who I am. And then I'm saying I'm looking for a firearm, and then they directly navigate me over to the revolver section and I'm like <laughs> so these are some of the myths that we're going to bust today and that's where we're going to use Lance to, to give some of those answers so what are your opinions or educate us on the best guns uh, uh, not being necessarily revolvers well it's not it's uh, in fact I uh, helped out with a, a well-armed woman chapter in Orange County and uh, as an RSO during one of the shoots and uh, we had a uh, one of the women in there that the husband had um, gifted her a, a 357 Magnum. It was hammerless, and uh, she was shooting uh, 38 caliber rounds out of it just to mitigate some of the recoil. And the trigger pull, um, I would say, was in ex- excess of 15 to 17 pounds. Wow. And uh, being a little bit older with the frail hands, she, she had a difficult time pulling the trigger, which uh, was showing, throwing her shot group on a silhouette all over the place. And uh, I gave her an opportunity to... Um, to run my uh, Sig Sauer P226, and she was shooting, uh, you know, silver, silver, uh, silver dollar size groups at, uh, you know, 15 feet, and nice. it was kind of dispelling that, that, uh, that idea that, uh, you know, it's a simplistic firearm. Uh, all you got to do is it's, it's a point and click interface, and, um, and it's not always necessarily the truth. I totally agree with you on that. Do, um, you, do you have a particular um, firearm that do, you do recommend to women? I mean, I know there's no one firearm that's best for um, all males and all females and um, all age types, but, I mean, what's your go-to uh, firearm when a female comes to you and asks, um, and a new fe- female to the shooting world asks you about a firearm and which one she should purchase um, for her first firearm? You know, I, I don't have a go-to. Um, it, it's really, it, it, it's... It's about her. Uh, it's right. about that individual. It's, you know, you, you have uh, some of the females with, uh, with smaller petite hands. You have uh, some of the females with, with uh, you know, a, a much, much larger gripper, uh, sometimes smaller in stature, sometimes larger in stature. And it, you really need to size them up and, and understand what they're capable of shooting and, um, and, and get the gun in the hands, you know, the try before you buy concept right. and see what they can handle. Um, you know, we have... Uh, some of the students that come through our class that uh, that struggle with uh, you know with a Walther P22 and have a di- difficult time even working the slide on that, and uh, you know I have a I have a 12 year old daughter that uh, runs my uh, CZ97B, which is a, a 45 ACP with no problems at all. So it it really depends on on that individual what their strength is, what their grip is, and what they're comfortable with. Very good. I am actually so glad that he brought that up because I do have really tiny petite hands. So um, it's really about uh, the, the grip and the size of the uh, firearm that I, which I'm able to handle. Um, so when they teach you, you have to learn how to grip the, the firearm correctly. None of this teacupping stuff, okay? So what we do, we basically put our hand on uh, the web of our hand right just underneath the, um, 
what we call the beaver tail and alongside the back strap and then we wrap our three fingers underneath the trigger guard and we make sure that we index our finger alongside the frame. Then we take our palm and we fill in the gap and then put the remaining four fingers underneath the trigger guard stacked on top of the other three and we stack our thumbs. That way we're able to get the, the best grip. So that's how you know if a, a firearm actually fits you because if you're not gripping it correctly and you have to compensate to reach the trigger, then that gun is probably just a little too big for right. you. And you have less control of it and less accuracy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So another myth that we should actually cover, and I, I and like just, this. Just to mention, um, Lance mentioned the, the try before you buy method. Yes. And r and Firearms, we support that method. So if we have a firearm that's in our demo collection that you want to try before you decide on which purchase you want to make, um, we're more, more than happy to take you to the range. We have a range within five minutes of a walking distance from our offices in St. Pete. So we're more than happy to take you across to the range and have you shoot a couple of um, firearms before you buy which one you want. That's fantastic. Wow. I, I just, I really like that subject. That is a really good one. It'll bring a lot more women into the firearms industry, which is absolutely the great way to go. Um, so uh, number two on our myth busting here. Um, this one says, a semi-automatic rifle is an assault rifle. I get this question all the time, but I really want want to hear what Lance has got to say. Uh, we, you know, we just, we just finished a fight here in uh, the state of California not more than, I believe, six months ago with one of the, uh, one of the assembly bills trying to deem uh, anything with a detachable magazine as an, as an assault rifle. <laughs> and uh, one of the things that I always, uh, you give me the definition of an assault rifle. What is that? You no, know, there, there's no you. legal definition of it. There's, uh, you know, people try to shoehorn, uh, you know, the, the scary features of a rifle uh, or a firearm into being assault, and uh, that you know it's not. It's you know as we teach our students, it's a modern you know sporting rifle. Um, you know the AR is not assault rifle. It's not what it stands for, and uh, we, we you know we try to push through a lot of these uh, these fallacies in, in getting people to understand that you know it's 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 not the tool. It's the person. The person's the problem. Treat the person. You know, it's, it's, if, if we carry this mentality on, you know, we're going to end up banning kitchen knives. We're going to end up banning cars. We're going to end up banning, um, you know. Pointy knives. <laughs> all, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and you just look at the, the pure ignorance of, of, some, of uh, some of the legislators that have been elected into office. And, and one more recently with uh, the, uh, the 30 caliber clips a second you know, speech that, uh, from, from DeLeon <laughs> no, that, no that absolutely made everybody in this, uh, in this state cringe. And I think worldwide, anybody that watched that just, just watched that all you know, on the air. And, uh, but it's not. You know, I, I take my students out. Uh, we take out the, uh, the 1022s, the Ruger 1022s. That was one of the firearms that was going to be banned. That was one of the ones that was going to be deemed an assault rifle. Absolutely. And, you know, you, you, you take the action out of it, you take the stock away, you take the, uh, um, you know, the parts and pieces, and you can make it look like an AR-15. Does that make it any more dangerous? Does it make it any more, um, you know, readily, readily used for, uh, for an, uh, you know, for a tragedy? Well, no, absolutely not. You know, again, it goes back to the, the person behind it. And not every semi-automatic uh, firearm or semi-automatic rifle is an assault rifle. Right. So no, that's that's an absolute fallacy, and it's something that we clear up in, uh, in not only our, uh, not only our, our our basic rifle classes, but even getting into some of the instructor courses and, and educating people with that. So, yeah, I could I completely get, um, agree with you. And I mean, you go around to g people that are for guns and people are against guns. Ask ten different people that same question: What's the definition of an assault rifle? You'll get ten different answers. Yeah, Absolutely. I read it somewhere that it started out with Armalite, and uh, mm -hmm. th that was the actual short term for it in, uh, in Armalite making this this rifle, and uh, and there is a huge difference between the assault rifle and our civilian brand of firearms, and and Absolutely. the AR term does not stand for assault rifle. It actually uh, was termed uh, for the Armalite. That's right. It's just the manufacturer's um, uh, name. Yeah. That's all. So. Mm -hmm. Um, so th this one's a really good one. If shot in the head with a twenty two, will the round rattle around in your skull, destroying the brain? I oh, like geez. This one. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll tell you that the, the um, th this I will say. You know, it's kind of the as, as the MythBusters say. It's you know plausible um, or uh, unfounded, however you want to describe that. Uh, the twenty two is a it's a vicious little bullet. Um, it is. If anybody that, that gets caught with shrapnel 
or uh, we have a, a return round come back on us on the range. It, it's always been the 22. But uh, still, it's you know you're you're talking about having a um, you know a, a small projectile impact bone you know travel through a uh, semi gelatinous mass and then exiting the other side. Uh, there's been cases in uh, in World War II. In fact, it was uh, I believe it was portrayed in uh, in Saving Private Ryan during the the invasion scene that uh, one of the soldiers had gotten uh, taken one in the in the helmet and it rattled around inside of his helmet. And uh, you can even find photos. On uh, on Google image search of that helmet that that has the uh, the striped band around it, uh, even more so there was I believe another one uh, come out of the Iraq War here recently, where uh, a soldier or a marine had uh, been shot in the head or shot in the helmet, and it had traveled around inside the helmet. Is it implausible that uh, that that could happen? Absolutely, it could happen. Um, you know, it's just pure physics. But is it going to happen every single time? Absolutely not. Uh, when I was uh, in my younger days, uh, I was a uh, intern at a uh, local police department, and uh, had an opportunity to go on to a uh, on to a uh, crime scene where uh, a subject had been uh, had been shot in a in a gunfight out on the street, and he had been hit in the wrist. And after a search, we found the uh, the exit wound, which was uh, in his left ankle. So he had taken taken one in his right wrist and an exit wound in his left ankle. So this this. This uh, this bullet had traveled through this zigzag path through his uh, his body, maintaining a, a better part of its velocity, enough to to exit the body. So, yeah, I would I you know, can it happen? Yes. Will it happen every it time? Happen. Yeah, probably not. No. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. <laughs> um, this is another really good one. Silencers turn gunfire into a gentle whisper. Machine guns are magical death machines in capacity of controllability. <laughs> yeah, no, I you know the uh, and this has actually made the news here recently. Is the uh, the ATF I believe is seeing more and more requests for uh, for the suppressors, and uh, more and more people are going out and buying suppressors. Uh, in fact, I, I'm I'm wanting to say I believe one state now requires suppressors to be used during hunting. Um, does it make it a, a, a whisper? Absolutely not. No, if anybody's if anybody's ever fired a, a suppressed firearm. You know that it is not a gentle whisper. Um, you 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 still get that uh, that baffling effect. You you still hear a, a concussive discharge. Is it the uh, the loud crack of a rifle or the loud you know uh, discharge of a pistol? No, it 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 trims a lot of that off. But um, you know that myth generates from the the fear of uh, some of the anti rights advocates that are out there saying that oh well the the purchase of a suppressor will allow anybody to to walk into a bedroom and and uh, yeah, uh, that, that's not the case. Uh, yeah. It's certainly. You know, the, and I wish that that more suppressors were used on ranges and uh, especially outdoor ranges, so that you don't have to wear the you know the, the encumbering um, you know headgear all the time and the the hearing protection because it drops it below a level that that uh, is going to end up being damaging. So that's uh, that that's one that that's quickly dispelled the. Uh, the other one with the the machine gun, uh, we we kind of went two different directions because this is one that we discussed on our podcast uh, here a couple weeks ago. Uh, that fully automatic all of a sudden makes this uh, you know this fire hose of lead that that that'll yeah. come out of a firearm. And uh, you know you see the uh, what is it the Rambo movies with uh, Sylvester Stallone you know one handing the uh, the M60 and and just laying down uh, you know uh, fields of fire accurately and. Yeah, no, it, it's you know I had the pleasure of uh, of going through um, a course of fire with fully automatic weapons in in the Marine Corps, and and of course they're fun, you know. They, they, like the bumper sticker says, happiness is a belt fed weapon, and it truly is. Um, but no, it's it's not some some magical you know f fire hose of death that that's <laughs> uh, going to enable you to you know clear crowds out. It, it's just not it's not it's not true. Um, on that point, it's it's why when I was in the military, we had the the select fire that gave us the burst. It was a three round burst. After your second or third round, you're inaccurate anyways. Right. So what's the Absolutely. point of uh, continuing fire? So gotta yeah. make that first count, that first shot count. Absolutely. You do, you do, and that's that's our uh, you know that was obviously the one of the Marine Corps mottos was you know one shot one kill and yep. uh, you know fire discipline, conserve your ammunition and and oh, everything yeah. else that goes with that. Absolutely. Anything after the second or third shot, you're just firing to make noise. Oh, I, I actually had the pleasure of shooting a, a, a full automatic AK, and I'll, I'll tell you what, it rattled me out. They actually, the, the, 
go back a little earlier, the first time I ever shot a, a full auto Uzi, they actually had to chain it down and they had an instructor behind me holding just to make sure. And this, this firearm actually wanted a rise, which is almost zero accuracy in the first Absolutely. few shots. And the same thing with the AK, it, it literally rattled me and uh, probably not something I want to shoot again. <laughs> but, uh, oh, come on. Yeah, it gets, it gets it expensive quick with those. It does. It was like, what, it 80 does. cents a round? <laughs> Yep. Yep. So then uh, the capacity and controllability. Well, the capacity and the controllability from uh, that, that goes into the, the fully automatic. It's mm -hmm. like the MP5. Uh, you can go through a, a 30 round magazine in a little over two seconds. So if you're looking for sustainability of, uh, of suppressing fires uh, like they do in the military, that doesn't exist. You know, fully automatic is it has its purposes. It has its uses. But it doesn't have uh, uh, practical application for for what we do. It's fun, yeah. It's it's a it's a riot to go out there and you know and watch the brass jump out of a out of a firearm like that. But you know where does that come in practicality? And even in the even in the military, it's 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 a rare occasion that you would actually uh, you know select your uh, switch your firearm over, over to that mode. <laughs> Here's a good one. Why don't you read that one off? That's a, that's this is a good one too. <laughs> I only shoot a 45, so I only need one shot. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. This this one comes up all the time. This this has been even in in the instructor courses that I teach. This has been a uh, a, a point of contention, argument, uh, hurt feelings. Uh, it 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 truly is the myth. It truly is. You know, with, with modern ammunition um, and then the, for example, the Winchester Ranger SXT rounds, uh, used to be called the Black Talons, um, that, that match in firepower between the, the, the argument between the 9mm and the 45, that line is starting to become blurred. And uh, as, as we advance in technologies with defensive ammunition, the, that, that argument is eventually going away. Um, the... I will say, and, and I've argued this point myself, that a nine millimeter might expand, but a forty-five will never shrink. And but gotcha. it's in our uh, person protection inside and outside the home courses when we when we do stop uh, start talking about stopping a threat, and we do start talking about uh, lethality. Um, I get the I get asked the questions. Well, you know, how many times do you uh, do you engage your opponent? How many how many how many shots do you fire? And the answer is always uh, the answer is always enough, enough to stop your threat. Will one shot stop your threat? Probably not. Sounds good. Well, Lance, we're going to take a quick break and come right back to you. Um, one of the questions we're going to ask when you come back is, um, what round do you prefer for your self-defense round, or what round do you actually carry? Um, and we'll uh, discuss that right when we come back. All righty. R&R Firearms is a retail store located in St. Petersburg, Florida, giving our customers the time and education they need to make buying a firearm a safe and easy transaction. R&R Firearms also provides NRA training courses. Stop by our store in St. Petersburg, Florida at 1411 16th Street North or visit our website at www.rrfirearms.com. That's rrfirearms.com. <laughs> and welcome back. All righty. So, Lance, that uh, one question is actually which uh, uh, ammunition or, or caliber do you prefer? You know, I've I've always been a, a purist with the, the forty five ACP. I, I've uh, that's um, I've just find I've I've got larger hands. You know, I've kind of got the bare paws, right. and I found that the nineteen elevens or the even as I mentioned earlier the the CZ ninety seven B just it, it fits my hand better. Um, the yeah, I, I haven't I've, I've I have not been a Glock fan. I don't get involved with the Glock versus 1911 arguments because that's just you know that's toxic. <laughs> that's personal opinion. Uh, it really is, and uh, you know I've 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 lost friends over that um, simply because they've owned Glocks and you know uh, Tupperware belongs in the kitchen, not on the range. <laughs> so we. Um, I thought we were going to get involved in this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I've uh, I've I've always I've I've always carried the 45. Now that has changed recently. That's changed here in the last couple months. And uh, on the purchase of a, a, a six hour P226 Mark 25 Navy SEAL edition. Mm. And uh, that gun, I've, um, I've put it to the test. Uh, we run a, a handgun challenge here in uh, Orange County at uh, the Evans uh, Shooters World and, and Gunsmithing in Orange, California. 
and we run a handgun challenge. And it is a, a defensive scenario with several stages, a total of four or five stages. And I ran that gun as hard as I could. I, I did. I got one of the best scores, best times that I've that I've I've put forth so far. And uh, we actually have a video of it of the uh, the last uh, the last uh, stage of the shootout, which is you against another uh, individual that's uh, of uh, matched skill. And if you check out YouTube, uh, Fast OC TV, all one word, uh, you'll see uh, myself and a gentleman by the name of Lex, who is a remarkably fast shooter. Uh, go head to head, where we've got to hit a silhouette twice and then break two balloons. And if you watch the uh, the barrel rise on that 226, it just doesn't move. There, there's no motion in that gun, and it's a nine millimeter. So you've got a you've got reduced recoil. You've got a for those of you outside of the state of California, you have a, an increased capacity um, beyond the, the ten rounds that are typically carried. Uh, or at least for my CZ 97, it carries ten rounds inherently. And uh, this will carry a total of 16. So you get that nice mix. It's a great gun. It's, uh, it's, it's well built. It's got a Picatinny rail on the front if you're looking to, if you're that guy that carries the lasers and the flashlights. Yeah. And uh, Just yeah, like the clock, so it I'm, I'm, like. I'm torn. I really am. Uh, all of my carry guns are nine millimeters so far. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's the, it's the simple, simplicity of having a, uh, a uh, low profile uh, handgun, you know, the, the 45s get a little bulky. They start pulling down the pants. You get that embarrassing scenario of, uh, you know, exposing your sidearm or God forbid anything else in the, the middle of a grocery store. So, well, Lance, we're getting pretty close to the end of the show. Um, we do have two more questions uh, we want to answer. So um, hopefully we get through these. Mm -hmm. And Catherine, this is an interesting one. I'm not sure if it's a legal question or not, but oh, we're going to throw it out then. Yeah, I, I've heard this all the time, and, and I really am not sure exactly how to answer this other than don't do that. Um, but this one's because forensics are so good. <laughs> um, it says, if you shoot someone on the porch, you drag them through the front door. What is your opinion? Oh, you hear that all the time. <laughs> I, I, was with the, um, I was with the police department for a few years up in Alhambra, California, and uh, working with... Um, you know, some of the individuals that were on the CSI and, and some of the forensic staff with, uh, you know, Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, that it, it, it does not get any, any more inaccurate than that statement. Um, they, uh, they have the stuff called luminol that if you've ever watched the actual movie CSI, they are going to know exactly what happened. Right. Uh, they, you know, they, they, stuff, they, uh, they hit it with the light and they can tell where the bullet was shot from, you know, just right. by simply the blood spray patterns. Yeah, that is, yeah, do not do that. If, so if, if it's if it's a defensive shoot, make it a defensive shoot. But I will say this, there is a very thin line between uh, between a good shoot, a uh, good defensive shoot, and murder. So Absolutely. keep that in mind. Yes, indeed. And here's one of the ones we um, see on the movies all the time. Um, drop guns go off. When you drop your gun, it goes off. Tell us about that one. You know what? That's... Um, it, it really depends. You know, as we as instructors and as training counselors, we teach, you know, where's the safety on a firearm? Um, you know, it's, it's in between your, your ears and at the tip of your finger. And Absolutely. can mechanical safeties fail? Absolutely. It's even a test questions for all the basic courses. And, and I'm not going to get into uh, manufacturers or anything, but uh, there, there has been several lawsuits uh, in the past, I think spanning the last 15 years of a particular rifle that would go off on its own. That's right. That uh, so that's you know that's a major concern. Can a dropped firearm go off? Absolutely, it can go off. Um, we've uh, the, during one of the, one of the calls up there in uh, during the, uh, my time in the police department, they had taken a 380 off a suspect, and uh, during a, a chamber check, uh, pulling the slide, the gun the gun discharged. So you know, can anything happen? Absolutely, these things are made out of metal. They're fallible. You know, things can go wrong. Uh, it's why we preach maintenance. It's why we preach cleaning in our classes and, and taking care of your firearms and taking them to gunsmiths for checks every so often, just like you do your car for an oil change. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, that, that, that can actually happen. Well, thank you, Lance. Um, well, we're out of time today. Thank you very much for um, joining us. And um, anybody that needs to get a hold of us, they can always get a hold of us from our website, thekgunshow.info. Um, always watch the show at thekgunshow.tv. Um, Lance's information will be on our Facebook in case you want to get, get hold of Lance and get some more information about Lance. And uh, Catherine, what do we have next week? 
I think we're doing uh, covering the Eddie Eagle, and we're probably going to have a few students in here. That's um, that's right, Catherine. That's we're going to have a couple of kids in here in studio. We're going to go through the um, Eddie Eagle program for the kids. It's an NRA um, program specially designed for pre-K to third graders, designed to teach a kid if they come across the firearm to stop, don't touch, leave the area, tell an adult. So we'll be doing that show live for our children next week at the K-Gun Show. And if your child's interested in being on the show next week, um, give me or Catherine a call or send us a text message through Facebook and we'll get your, uh, your child here on the studio with us for the Eddie Eagle program. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next week. Thank Have a good night. You. I wanted to thank Lance Bull, and it was an honor. Very, yes, very nice you, to meet you. <laughs> Have a great night. <laughs>